Hello and welcome to tonight's Odd Key Cafe. I hope everyone's having a good Friday night. Tonight we have a very special guest. He's the co-creator of Sabretooth Swordsman and Bully Wars. He's a cartoonist and works with Marvel, IDW, Boom, Image. Aaron Conley, welcome to the Odd Key Cafe. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> so we like to keep it a little community Q&A open format. If you don't mind, people would just kind of raise their hands or ask questions in text chat. And it's just a yeah. way to people to learn from you. I was just curious, what do you mean, as an artist and cartoonist, we get a lot of uh, questions about AI art and the, the rise of AI art. I've been seeing that a lot in the news. As an artist yourself, what are your thoughts on this whole new technology? I think it can be, I think it can be used for a lot of interesting things. I don't, I've seen a, people doing a lot of really cool stuff with it. Um, especially the stuff that looks like stills from movies and stuff that people are doing. And and it's coming from artists that I like who are genuinely good artists. I don't like the idea that AR can just like steal from somebody else's art. Um, that kind of stuff I, I can't, I can't get down with at all. Um, but I, you know, I do think that we're at the beginning, we're at the beginning here of this situation. And in my opinion, um, I think, you know, people are freaking out about it, which I don't think they need to freak out about it just yet, you know. Um, and I think I think eventually it's going to blend into something that we all can use, like, really cool. You know, like, yeah. what, if I make, what if I make some cool AI images, you know, that it, it's the kind of stuff that you're, like, not stealing from another artist, right? And what if I never even showed that to anybody and then I started painting or illustrating those images that I made? on the AI art. So then does AI art become real art at that point? You know, it's like, there's a yeah, lot. I'm just getting a whole bunch of like robot humanitarian questions then. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of questions that are going to go into this and it's just, I mean, who knows? It, it could end up, uh, what, what was the big thing we just went through with, um, everybody thought it was going to be the new big thing. The, uh, the little monkeys with all the different hats on. Oh, I've already uh, forgotten it. <laughs> the the crypto punks. Yeah, oh, yeah. NFTs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those. Yeah. Yes. Everybody was like, there was so much conversation around NFTs for like, you know, what was it, three months, and 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 it's already kind of died out, right? But like, there's not. That's not saying that NFTs couldn't come back around, or somebody could find something cool to do with that whole thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's such a, a young technology. There's there's really no way you know, to know where it's going to go in the future, for sure. And I think AI is a part of that. I, I'm definitely not going to, you know, I yes, I am an old man, but I'm not going to be the old man who's like screaming into the clouds, you know. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. down. I'm, I'm down. I'm down for it on some level. Other levels, it's going to have to figure itself out, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely wild and young but um it's exciting for a lot of people and especially for creators because it's kind of it's always unfortunate to see creators work go for so much on the secondary when the creators never getting their cut and they might have sold a piece for 20 bucks and 10 five years later it sells for 10,000 and they didn't see any of that or sure i mean i mean that can happen you know nowadays it's like if that kind of thing is happening you know it's best to get yourself a good art dealer you know? <laughs> end up in that kind of situation you know i mean i you know i did a piece i did a calvin and Hobbes piece for the cartoon art museum to help raise money for the cartoon art museum and i've never i got like a you know the piece sold for like six thousand dollars to raise money for the cartoon art museum you know uh, and, you know, I, I did that piece to donate to the Cartoon Art Museum. Am I sitting around, like, crying in my boots because that $6,000 didn't go into my pocket? No. I am I was happy to help the Cartoon Museum, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. She's fun. Welcome to stage, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Aaron, um, I guess it's been a few years back. I read... Um, some issues of your Bully Wars comic. Uh, really enjoyed the artwork in that. You did great. Um, it's the style was 
uh, reminded me of some of the stuff. I, I know you're 45. I'm 46 years old. And um, I grew up on uh, Garbage Pail Kids. Oh, and I mean, that, yeah, that kind what, of stuff is definitely a big influence for sure. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask if that was an influence because I know that there was a lot of, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I guess toilet humor, uh, <laughs> snot, uh, things like that in there. And, uh, you know, that appeals to young kids, young, young boys mostly, but, you know, there's young girls that it appeals to, too. And uh, was there any I other mean, thing? Girl, my, my wife is definitely into boogers. And yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, besides Garbage Pill Kids, what other influences were there to your artwork? Well, and, and, you know, the thing was about that book, too, was, you know, Scotty's about, Scotty Young, uh, the writer of the book, is about our age, too. I think Scotty, I think Scotty might be a year older than me. He might be your age, 46. Um, so, you know, he grew up, I mean, uh, both of us, like a lot of the big influences for Bully Wars were, you know, just animation, I think, in general, and the animation we grew up with in the 80s um, and even early 90s, you know, like, I think that a lot of the inspiration that came from Bully Wars was definitely like Ren and Stimpy, um, Invader Zim, Marvage yeah, Pale yeah. Kids, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, just any, and even like, let's not even lie, like, just like the Nickelodeon aspect in general, I would say was probably like a huge influence in that, just with lots of drippy stuff and lots of veins and lots of things that are just you know just there to make you go ooh, you know and yeah, absolutely. Also, maybe, also maybe go oh that's kind of cute at the same time you know mm -hmm. yeah i really love that uh the art style and uh you know the comic was was good i loved it um, I'm also a big it. fan of I, uh, I Hate Fairyland. Or, uh, yeah, like I said, Scotty comes, he comes from that whole school that, like, you know, you and I and well, all of us were probably, like, pretty inspired by at the time, for sure, you know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to let somebody else up on the stage now. I just wanted to ask what your influences were, because I knew it had to be... Garbage Pail Kids and uh, sure. some of the stuff we watched and when we were young. So for sure, um, for sure. And thanks for enjoying the book, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anybody in the audience hasn't read it, they should. Uh, you know, it. I, I would say it's more of a teen audience would enjoy it, but you know, uh, folks like me, you know, that grew mm -hmm. up on that stuff would really enjoy it too yeah we've got quite a few adult fans for the book i mean they say all ages for the book so you know all ages genuinely means all ages so yeah thanks she's fine thank you man up. all right hey you're all welcome to the stage man um you um hello uh, oh, hi your words are, are so awesome. I want to ask you, uh, what's your favorite part of drawing? What's my favorite part of drawing? Yes. None of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, uh, uh, I think it's just a struggle. You know, making making comics and making art is a struggle every day. I, you know. Um, I think especially drawing is the hard part. Drawing is, is the place where you have to do, you know, where you have to start it on a blank piece of paper and you have to like, you know, make all these ideas happen on page. Um, I would definitely say though, in making comics and making comic art, my favorite part is, is usually the inking because at that point I've, I've figured out pretty much the hard parts and, um, when I go to, you know, do inking, I can, I can relax a little bit more and, um, you know, just sort of glide around with that, you know, and I, I would definitely say that that's my favorite part. 
I mean, I do enjoy figuring things out, but it can also in the pencils, but it all can also be, you know, it can be a struggle and it can, it can be hard work some days, you know? Um, and some days you just say like, what the heck am I doing? You know? And then you're like, then you have a good, nice pencil page out and ready to ink and you start inking and you're like, oh yeah, I guess I'm, I'm doing okay on this, you know? Thank you all for coming to stage. I appreciate that. So have you always found uh, drawing like or just the creation of the image a drag or did it kind of just over the years become more of a chore? I wouldn't say, sorry, I didn't mean to come off like it's a drag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's the hardest part for sure. You know, it's definitely, you know, you're trying to make, you know, you're trying to make a, there's a lot of things you're trying to do when you're making a comic book. You know, you're trying to, um, a, make some cool stuff that people are into, that people are going to dig, some nice, beautiful images, you know, but you're also trying to be in service of a story, you know, you're trying to tell the story, you're trying to make it a clear story where everybody can look through the comic pages and know almost exactly what's going on without even reading it, you know? Um, yeah. And, and you're, 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 you know, you're trying to, to bring something extra to what what the guy has written on paper, you know? And you, you don't want to just coast, you know? You don't want to just coast. Like, yeah, there's days when you have to, like, you know, I got to hit a deadline. Maybe this page doesn't need as much work as I would have put in it had I not had a deadline. But, you know, like I said, it's not a drag. It's just work. And it, it, can, be, it can be tough work sometimes. But when you have a beautiful page done at the end of the day, you know, any sort of drag that you felt or when you hold that comic, you know, when you picked up that comic or, or you know, you've got some comp copies in the mail of what you did and it looks good, you're you're happy about it. And all that all that drag that you sort of felt is completely gone away. You know, it's time to drag again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's you can really appreciate your own work, I guess, because creating something out of nothing is mind boggling. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just work. I mean, it's, it's tough work. It's not, you know, it's never, I, maybe for some guys, it's an easy day every time they step into the art room. You know, for me, it's, I'm always trying to make something new and interesting and something that really makes people's eyes, like, excited, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Always trying to keep the audience on their toes. You got it. Hey, Blaze, welcome to stage, man. Go ahead and ask your question. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? How you doing? Doing good. And uh, I, when I saw you guys were on here, I was like, this is awesome. I love Bully Wars. She's fun to me too. Um, and you're talking about like vivid images and stuff. And I read a ton of comic books. But like, as soon as I saw you were on here, I was like, Bully Wars, there's that one like sewer splash page that you did that, and like, yeah. there's two or three that was just so awesome. And I remember seeing it on the Felix site, and I'm like, I'm going to get that. And it was gone really quick. But um, just felt like that was a four or five years ago, and I just can't wait to share this story if I get to. Sorry, you were kind of, you're kind of muffled there. Did you ask a question? Did, did you guys hear, did he ask a question there at the end? He did not ask a question. He was just uh, saying he wanted to share that story with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask, though, if we're getting volume two or anything, or chapter two ever, or do we work? Yeah, sorry, it's still muffled over here. Yeah, Blaze, your mic is kind of uh, underwater or something. You. Oh, sorry. Right. I just pulled my headphones off. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Oh, that's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Sound great. Ask thanks, say, thanks. Yeah, say that again, please. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Will we ever get uh, Bully Wars Volume Two or Bully Wars Two or anything like that? Well, you know, uh, Scotty's the the book. You know, Image had never done an all ages book before, so the book oh I didn't know didn't that quite do what Scotty was kind of expecting it to do. However, though, Scotty's agent has been shopping the book around to maybe get picked up as an animated series or maybe a live action series. Who knows? If that were to happen, there's a good possibility of us doing a second series of it. 
we've thrown around the idea a couple times of maybe doing like a Halloween special or a Christmas special or something like that um, for the super fans out there. Um, but as of as of right now, no, there's there's not going to be um, another chapter of Boy Wars. However, I am working on another book that I can't really talk about right now that oh has that has some very similar tones to Bully Wars. It's a, it's it's kind of like Bully Wars, maybe just a little bit more adult. Okay, can't wait. And then uh, for the Christmas special, just let us know. She's fine, and I will kickstart it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd definitely let you know. I'll let everybody know. Awesome. Thanks for letting me come up, guys. Appreciate you. Absolutely, yeah. Liz. Thanks for coming up. And, and if he did, you know, if he did like that um, that sewer page, I don't know if a lot of people out there, you know, are talking about Bully Wars, but if you do pick up my book, Saber Two Swordsman, which is um, still available, like, on Amazon and stuff, and if not, if you can't find one, hit me up on Instagram, and I'll send you a copy. But um, there's... There's a lot of the similar humor in that. It's a little more adult, but there's a really cool similar page to the um, the uh, sewer page in Saber Two Swordsman as well. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, you got it, dude. Thank you. Yep. And for anyone curious, I just posted the links to Aaron's socials in general chat. So those are his official socials. Rick Flair, come on up. Welcome to stage. What up, what up, Aaron, man. So listen, my question for you is, uh, I guess, can you remember when you officially, you felt like, hey, man, I can actually make a living doing this? Do you, like, remember that day you were like, hey, I actually made a paycheck where I can actually uh, maybe do this and uh, have a career in this? Um, that's actually a funny question because when I started drawing Bully Wars, I w at that time, I was actually still working a couple days a week, maybe like two days a week at this comic book shop here in town. Um, and uh, Scotty called me on the phone one day, actually, when I was at work and I just went out back and he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. He's like, you're not working on the comic. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm at the comic shop. He's like, dude, you're going to make enough money off this book. You can quit that job. And I was like, and I like I just you know I like could not let go of the fact that like I might actually be like a full time artist, and I think like a week later I put in my notice <laughs> and I was just drawing full time at that point. So I can't say exactly what day it was, but it, it was definitely like early on drawing um, Bully Wars that I I quit the job and I have never had to have a regular job again. That's freaking awesome, man. And, and I guess luckily, we, luckily, let's not ever say that it might not ever happen again. Who knows? You know? yeah, right. Well, look, well, I guess with you quitting your job and getting into the artist side of things, I guess the business side of being an artist, have, have you found that being a little bit more, I guess, complicated? Like, hey, one, you're an artist, but as far as learning all the business side of things and making bad deals or any of that? I Luckily, I haven't run into that too much there's been once or twice where you, i had to i had to um i had to get a couple emails going uh <laughs> uh more than i would have liked to you know it was it was at the verge of me going on twitter and saying hey these guys aren't paying up you know um luckily that, that's only happened maybe maybe twice at the most and i've been like i said i've been very very lucky um that you know, when I finish one project, somebody's asking me to do something else. Um, I'm lucky that I have an art dealer as well, which he, you know, you can follow him at FelixComicArt.com, which he sells a lot of my originals and he gets me a lot of commissions. Um, so I, I, yeah, I've been very lucky and, and luckily I haven't had, I haven't really had to go begging for work either, which is nice too, you know, not that I wouldn't. I would absolutely do that because I love drawing comics and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes everybody doesn't know that you're open and available to do work. You got to let them know. 
I said, well, look, just to let you know, another place that pays up front is, you know, Oddkey, man, we pay up real nice. So if you ever decide to, like, get into the NFTs or want to put one out, look, we're going to pay up. You ain't going to have to worry about your money. You're going to get it. <laughs> well, D D DM me, man. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> there we go. Hey, man, Aaron, nice talking to you, man. Thank you for coming out tonight, bro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Rick, for coming up to stage. Appreciate you, man. And yeah, digital art, man. If you ever want to get into it, odd key may be the community for you. Brisky, what's going on, man? Welcome to stage. Hey, how's it going tonight, fellas? Hey, Aaron, thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you. Hey, appreciate you. Uh, my name is Brisky Dingo. I'm a team member here at Odd Key Cafe. So uh, we have a little competition within our community, and uh, every week uh, we have trivia. And uh, we have two teams that compete every week in our trivia where we ask, you know, tons of different questions between, you know, uh, Spawn history, Disney history. Uh, this next week we got uh, uh, w, uh, wrestling history coming up. Anyways, it's split into two different factions, one being Scorched and one being Gunslinger. So with your knowledge of all the new comics coming <clears throat> or, or on the market right now with uh, King Spawn, Scorched, and Gunslinger, if you were to choose a team, which team would you choose? I hate, I hate to say, but when you do draw comics for a living, you don't get to catch up uh, as much with what you'd like to sometimes. You know, I am definitely behind on my, my comics reading for sure. Uh, you want to tell me a little bit more about it, and I'll, I mean. All right, so. Um, I can also, I can also, year, go, I can also uh, go always go with classic Spawn, you know, love me some no, classic sure, Spawn. sure, sure, so, uh, so sure. Uh, so uh, a couple of, or actually in 2021, uh, Todd uh, mm -hmm. launched a new series of Spawn, and one uh, comic book series is called King Spawn. Another one is going to, is called scorched and then the other one is called gunslinger gunslinger really is focused on gunslinger spawn and uh, oh, yeah. Weston, yeah, and his know. character and then scorched kind of uh brings in she spawn medieval spawns and gunslinger everybody kind of almost kind of like an avengers type of scenario Sure. And then, and then King Spawn is more uh, of a dark twist on on uh, on Spawn himself. But anyways, uh, if I was going to work personally work on one of those books, I would probably like to work on Gunslinger Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's hilarious. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. Hey, and, I appreciate uh, you. I'm a fellow Gunslinger. Uh, pew pew. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I would love to see uh, a gunslinger cover with like the the art style for um, for Bully Wars. Like the it has there's already kind of like a slight comedic effect or like comedic theme in parts yeah. of gunslinger. So I think you could do like a really cool like over the top like you say garbage pail kids, very gross like grotesque. Oh yeah, like, I'd love I'd work on I'd work on spawn any spawn in a second if Todd asked me for sure. You know, I mean Todd was. I, uh, Todd was one of probably the biggest, biggest things that ever got me into comics for sure. You know, I mean, when Amazing Spider, when he was working on Amazing, when he was doing just regular Spider Man, and then when he, when Spawn came out, I just thought my little mind was just blown. You know, um, I thought it was the coolest stuff I had ever seen in my entire life. You know, um, and still feel that way. I, I've actually been rereading some old spawn and some savage dragon when i get time you know yeah totally i i, I when i read i got into spawn kind of late like as a kid but um one of the first comics i read was spawn 130 and it's like a really like creepy ghost story almost like it has nothing to it, it really has no like normal like action fight scenes it's like a very creepy horror ver uh story and i just remember being like blown away as like a, a eight-year-old just like looking at like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I'm also way too young to be looking at this because this is yeah, really yeah. crazy. I mean, that's, that's what's fun about Spawn, though, too, is you could you could do so many different things with that book. You know, you can make it a horror comic. You can make it, you know, you can make it a silly, goofy '80s goopy 
this, you know, you can do, like I said, and, and the thing is that what, there's like all kinds of different spawns throughout history. So you could, you know, you could do like an eighties, like neon Terminator spawn, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of the whole thing with the, all these new series that uh, Frisky mentioned is it is a lot of the um, alternate, on hell spawns from like across time and like different dimensions and stuff with like the new series so that's kind of my favorite part of getting into these new series i was like man i love that there's like a canon reason there's all these crazy spawns and like different ways that they interact and the scorch kind of that's what i like about that series is it kind of meshes a lot of different people together and you get to see them interact that sounds great <laughs> yeah i mean you can do basically anything with Spawn if you wanted to. I'm sure maybe maybe Todd will uh, pop in chat sometime and hmm. we can get you. That would be awesome. Uh, is it any also if you anyone in the audience doesn't want to come up on stage and ask questions, feel free to type them out in general chat. If you are stage shy, don't don't be afraid. Welcome back to stage, C Spawn. I'm back. <laughs> no worries. Welcome back. What's going on? Well, I want to ask Aaron, is there a comic book character out of any of the publishers, any comic book character ever, is there one that you particularly identify with or one that is similar to you? Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Is there, can you elaborate on why? <laughs> I don't know. He just seems <laughs> like, uh, he seems like the most like, you know, uh, like he doesn't really have any powers, right? <laughs> Smokes a lot of cigars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Wears, that's... wears a ruffled suit and tie. Sounds like some stuff I could get into, you know? Oh, yeah. Just, that's hilarious. I, thank you, She's for coming up and asking that. That was a very uh, unique question. And I'm just uh, curious. You said you were working on some upcoming stuff. Is there anything that you're working on now that you can talk about that you would like to share? Didn't uh, that uh... I'm sorry. I would love to work on Howard the Duck, to be honest. But no, I just started working on this thing, so um, I had a pretty busy... I, I, I've worked on a couple Kickstarter things that are going to be launched, which I can't really talk about either. Um, yeah, there's just a couple things that I've been involved with right now that I, you know, I was really, uh, like I said, October and November, man, I was... Cooking. So comic pages let me tell you what but, um yeah unfortunately i can't talk about any of it just yet but uh it's definitely once i can i will definitely you know just follow me on instagram or um you know and, and anytime anything's gonna come out by me i'll uh i'll um let you know on instagram. yeah also i just I'm finished up a commission list so my Art dealers should be opening up my commission list again soon here, probably early next year. So sign up for Felix Comic Arts newsletter, and that's another place to find out about what I kind of got going on sometimes, too. I may be wrong about this, but it seems to me I kind of remember, it, isn't Howard the Duck one of the only comic book characters that has defeated Galactus? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that much about um, oh. history, but that doesn't that doesn't that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I don't know that he beat him. I don't. You know, I don't knows? recall. It's been a while, but maybe I'm wrong. We could all just Google did Howard the Duck ever beat Galactus? Offered him a pack of stogies or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm gonna have to look it up now, but I I believe I remember reading that one time. Squirrel Girl also defeated Galactus, I believe. Yeah, please, please verify. Yeah, Galactus even a threat anymore? If anybody <laughs> would be you. 
That's that's a good point. He's not a big yeah. bad if Squirrel Girl and Howard the uh, Duck are. Yeah, which is, he's not even Galactus anymore. <laughs> he's just some giant dude. <laughs> Can't handle like squirrels. He showed up and they gave him diarrhea or something. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get on. Hey, you let Galactic Ted have a quiz. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? I had a quick question. So do you prefer, um, nowadays, do you typically uh, do everything uh, pencil and pen on paper? Or do you prefer digital? And then a second part to this question, are there any other mediums uh, art mediums that you enjoy creating on? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I'm still pretty traditional these days. I did recently buy an iPad and I have been messing around with that a little bit. Um, well, as I've mentioned several times about my art dealer, but the nice thing is what you do work like I work, um, you know, I still pencil. I do some, I do some arranging of stuff on Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll print out those pages, um, and usually I usually draw a little bit smaller than I actually ink. So a lot of times I'll scan it into Photoshop, and then I'll print it back out on a, on a larger piece of uh, 11 by 17 crystal board, mm -hmm. um, and ink on on top of a blue line. But the nice thing about that is when you know you don't do digital artwork. I just anytime I finish any comic projects, I just send the pages off to my art dealer. And a lot of times he'll sell those pages. So it's nice because I get paid from the companies and then I'll get another little bit of money on the back end from the, my original artwork, um, which is really nice. Um, and I, I, I'm just, I'm not, like I said, I've only barely messed around with um, Procreate just a little bit so far. Mm -hmm. But at some point I might like to do a similar thing what I do now, but do mainly the penciling in in procreate uh -huh. just to speed up the process a little bit more and then i would print that out and then still ink it like live you know um that's that's what i kind of like that would be the ultimate future but i just need some time to mess around with procreate a little bit more mm -hmm. um but yeah actually i have also been uh recently doing um some color commissions through my art dealer which is I've been using all kinds of stuff, man. I've been using um, some watercolor. I've been using some airbrush, actually. I've been using some colored pencils. You know, like uh, I've really, it's really been nice doing those color, full color commissions again because it's almost like being back in art class or something. You know, you're just really just experimenting and messing around, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, that's awesome. Thank you for airbrush. sharing. The airbrush is always great for making things look like they're really shiny and, and vibrant and neon, you know, and I'm really into that kind of vibe. Awesome. Thank you for your, uh, your time. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Aaron, on that note, do you, uh, do you often find yourself kind of more experimenting with the commissions? And then when you get the, like the, the comics and stuff like that, are you, do you stay more in your wheelhouse or do you try to experiment a lot on your comics as well? Or is it kind of like a testing ground for your commissions? Uh, I think I would say that I experiment more in my comics. Um, because the comics are for me. I mean, the comics, like, the comics are, yeah, for me, really, in the end. Um, I'm always trying to make myself happy with the comics. Sometimes you get a commission and you're like, you'll second guess yourself a little bit because you're like, oh, I, I hope the guys, whoever this guy is, I'll never meet him maybe, but. I sure hope he likes, he thinks it's cool what I, you know, did for him, you know? Yeah. So sometimes you, sometimes you fit your, I definitely think a little bit harder about a person getting it than I do for comics, for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. But sometimes I'll experiment. Sometimes, you know, sometimes if a, if a commissioner asks you for something wacky, you know, you know that that guy's up for, for, for something crazy. <laughs> so, but you know, yeah, if a guy's cool. like, you know, if a guy's like, you know, draw, do me, uh, you, you know, do Thor, you know, you're, I, you know, I try to give him a good Thor, but I, I try not to do anything too crazy with Thor. And yeah. sometimes it's, it's an opportunity. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do really love like classic superheroes, you know, so it is sometimes a really fun to be able to 
you know, be like, oh, I'm just going to draw a really great classic Thor right now, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely drawing some of those iconic characters you grew up with has got to be fun. And right. being paid for it on top of it. That's right. That's right. Frisky, welcome back to the next stage, man. Hey, thank you again. Hey, Aaron, uh, you were talking about that you're into different platforms such as uh, like Procreate and then using watercolors and everything like that. Um, have, have you ever experienced, number one, with any type of clay modeling or any type of, uh, you know, modeling that or, you know, sculpting in that way? And then also, have you ever used like a platform such as ZBrush um, uh, to create any type of artwork? Um, I don't know what ZBrush is. Uh, I've never really messed around with sculpting. There's a buddy of mine who has another buddy here in town that does some really nice stuff with clay and I'm always like you know when I get a minute I gotta sit down with that kid you know but no I've never really messed around with that too much besides just like back in art class you know um and sure. but that's been a very long time now but no I don't what's the ZBrush so ZBrush is, is, from my understanding, is exactly like if you were to have physical clay, you know, on a, on a, on a surface, it's, it's pretty much, you know, the digital uh, equivalent. It's, it's kind of like Procreate, you know, where you can do any type of painting or drawing or sketching. Uh, uh, from my understanding, ZBrush is more creating a, a three-dimensional, you know, uh, uh, model or, 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 you know, art kind of thing. No, no, yeah, see, I, I didn't even know about that. I'll have to look into that. All right, man, thank you. I appreciate you. No, thank you. Thanks, Frisky. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear from different artists and uh, the, the different ways they like to go about creating their art. I know uh, Procreate's a common platform, and ZBrush has been mentioned you're definitely the so far the artist that's kept it most traditional, and I respect that. That's how, in your uh, experience, how has the comic industry changed over the years? Well, I, as being an old man that got into comics, drawing comics late, I've only probably been in the industry for about five years now. Um, I couldn't really say from the inside, you know. I do think that there are a lot more people that are working digitally for sure. Um, which is cool. I don't have a problem with that, you know, at all. I'm, I just, like I've said, I, you know, I'm an old man and I haven't really had time or the effort to, you know, switch from what I'm doing. Um, yeah, you got it. You got it. Got it down. There's no need to change what's working. Yeah, and like I said, it has been nice to. Um, it has been nice to, like I said, get you know. Get that art in some people's hands and you know get a little bit of back money on that stuff too um it's funny because my art dealer has even had a couple guys that did work were working digitally and he he kind of got them into at least doing the covers traditionally um so you know when you're working on a big book like i don't know you know some of the guys that are on the same you know team as my our dealer, you know, like Nick Dragata, who was working on East West, I think he was working digitally for the interiors, but I think eventually he did start doing the covers. Traditionally, you know, when you got a popular book like that, you can, you know, sell those covers for a good bit of money. And like I said, you know, you make a little bit of extra off of, you know, the comic industry is notorious for underpaying artists. And um when you can get in a deal like that, it, 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 it definitely helps, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I, that's one thing that Todd was talks about a lot is cause he does digital mostly. And he says that it's, he miss uh, like his original artwork cause he stopped doing it goes for so much just because he stopped doing the original artwork and the, and cause he's only doing digital. He's not getting that kickback on any of those, those physical pages, but for the spawn, yeah, you know, I, mean, I mean, if Todd was doing, traditional artwork these days his originals could go for big big money oh yeah i'm, I'm sure some people here in the in the audience he's probably doing a, he's probably doing okay a little better than the rest of us just on his digital work you know 
<laughs> oh, for sure. I, yeah, Todd, Todd's definitely, I think he's doing all right. He doesn't need to sell those pages. No, probably not. <laughs> but, but I know for Spawn versus Batman, he was asked to uh, actually do do some originals on paper because they wanted to sell the, the original pages. He was planning right. on doing it all digitally. Right. Yeah, when at a New York Comic Con, we got to, he showed some of the, the artwork at one of the uh, panels, and it was actually really cool to see just some really original artwork that close up. I was like, man, you, I, I've never I've never seen it up close before, and it was just cool. Like, it's very rare to that he has, like, an original page with him. Yeah. Uh, someone in the audience, Aaron, asks, actually, um, I'm going to skew his question a little bit. Would you ever be interested in doing a digital collectibles? What is that? No, oh, NFTs. Sorry. We, we, they're NFTs, but digital collectibles is what we call them. Yeah, I was actually, I, I, I you know, I would be, I was, in, I, I'm going in circles here. I was actually <laughs> working on an NFT project for actually a company recently, Ooh. and they decided to drop it because oh. NFTs were uh, on the way out or whatever. Um, it didn't bother me that much because I still got paid for the project. So oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I probably didn't get paid as much as I could have if uh, the NFT project would have gone, you know, busters or whatever, you know. But like for sure. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't have a, a big problem with it. But once again, it's. It's one of those things that I think is going to evolve eventually to where, you know, they'll still be horrible NFTs, but then there'll be cool stuff too, you know? But oh, yeah, for I, sure. It's I, just I'd nice work on an NFT project probably. if I thought it was cool enough, for sure. And like I said, I almost, I, I did work on one and just never came out, so. Can you talk a little bit about maybe what it was or? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> don't want to push it? Yeah, no. Understandable. Was, Let's just say it was for a big company that deals a lot with zombies. Ooh. Interesting. Now you got yeah. my mind thinking. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely NFTs. There was quite quite the hype bubble. And, I mean, as we can see, that's gone to crap. But the underlying technology is there. And similar to when, like, Internet first came out and the AOL burst and everyone thought AOL was super cool and then it died off and now very few people use AOL. I don't want to say nobody because I know my parents actually right. use AOL, but um, it's it's just we're in that period where people don't really understand the technology and there's a, there's a lot of bad media because, I mean, I don't even, I, I understand why. We live, in an era, we live in an era now where there's so many things dropping in our plate like almost every day or every month. You oh, know, it's, it's like yeah, I mean, it's people are going to get scared. People are going to, you know, not know what to do, you know, and some people are going to know what to do. And in, in the end, it's, you know, it's, I think, so, you know, we're going to end up with some cool stuff and you're going to end up with some crappy stuff. But that's the world in general on everyday basis. You know, there's good comics and there's bad comics, you know, there's good movies and there's bad movies. You know, Absolutely. there's mediocre movies. There's bad movies that you love. There's bad comics that you love. <laughs> You know, it's like, I think, I think, you know, a lot of people are, like I said, are getting, are, are getting up and works about a lot of things because they just don't understand the thing and they don't understand why all these like things are popping up all over the place and they don't know what to do with it, you know, and you know, you don't necessarily need to know what to do with it. Just sit back and relax, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's just a different medium. It's not like yeah. anything. It's not. It's just the next evolution. I always imagined kind of a Elon Musk being Tyrell from Blade Runner, with all the shit he's got going on, and we're just going to get to a digital utopia, digital either utopia or dystopia, probably depending on your situation. Yeah, upload my consciousness into the computer. I don't care. <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Would you do that if you got the opportunity to live forever by a Yeah, man. Heck yeah. That, that'd Why be so crazy. Well, Would you want it to be like a Black well, Mirror episode? put my brain in a robot body and send me into outer space. That sounds like fun. I'm right there with you on that one. I can't wait for <laughs> cybernetics. I'm so, I'm, I'm just praying we get there before I get too old. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> up with you. I mean, yeah, that'd be exploring the depths of space. Just yeah, in the body. man. It sounds like a Love, Death, and Robots episode. Yeah, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll be drawing <laughs> comics. I'll be drawing comics in space, boys. <laughs> that would be that would be some crazy inspiration. Who knows? Yeah, what you find some uh, other planetary mushrooms or uh, plants or something <laughs> and just go crazy. Hopefully, my uh, robot body will let me do that, though. Right? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You just have to like open your dome and like rub the <laughs> on your open brain. Oof. So, Aaron, I just a quick question: um, What are some of your like favorite, more recent? Have you? I know you. You're a busy guy, but do you keep up with like recent movies or shows or anything like that? Is there any that you've been particularly enjoyed? Uh, movies. Yeah, movies or shows, whatever you're keeping up with. Oh, I don't man, know. I try, I, yeah, I I try to keep up. Uh, what did we just watch that we thought was amazing? The Bear. Did anybody watch The Bear? The Bear. And the bear is about a guy who takes over his brother's sandwich joint. And I know that premise sounds not that exciting, especially for a comics message board, but it was a really great show. It's got an 8.4 on IMDb. Oh, yeah. the guy, is it, it's with the, the brother from Shameless and like a lot of the yeah, characters from somebody Shameless. Somebody just recently told me he was on that Shameless show. Yeah, yeah, it's the older brother. Yeah, I haven't watched it, but I've heard a lot of people say it's like really Yeah, it was good. really, really great. And if anybody has ever worked in the restaurant industry, you definitely will get a lot from this show, for That's sure. That's what I heard. I heard it like really yeah. speaks to people who it shows like a lot of the crap that goes on with like working in a restaurant. Uh, what else did I just... Oh, Yellow Jackets. Um, I just finally watched Yellow Jackets. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's amazing. Yellow Jackets, I'm not familiar. You're coming out Yellow with Jackets dancing. is about this, um, this girl's golf team. Sorry, golf team. Soccer team. High school <laughs> soccer team that are flying to like another like location. And their plane crashes in the wilderness. And Ooh. sanity ensues. Insane. Is it like a oh Lord of the Flies scenario? A bit, a bit. It's got some definite Lord of the Flies vibes, some uh, cannibalistic vibes going on. There's also possibly some supernatural elements. Um, it's it's really good. It's really good, and it's cool because the beginning the the show goes back and forth from the girls when they were like crash landed. But then um, the it also goes to the girls grow some of the girls who have that you see who have survived, um, and are like trying to live normal lives, but that's not really happening for them. Yeah, that, that sounds really good. Actually, I'm gonna have to check that out. It's a, yeah, there's a two yeah. TV series that I've never. Wow, seven point nine IMDb. If anyone's curious, yeah, um, good stuff. Ranking. Movie wise, what did I watch? I just watched that movie, Barbarian. Did you guys watch that? Barbarian. Is it a new one? There was a new yeah. movie called Barbarian. It's on HBO. It it was it came out. I don't know around a, a Halloween, but it's now on HBO Max, and um, it's it, it it starts off with you thinking it's about like a bad Airbnb visit, but. Uh, it turns into so much more. Then it just gets crazy. Yeah, it's it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. Especially right. you're into horror movies. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out. I uh, we have a like agreement with all of us, um, like in this Discord, that if someone makes a movie reference or a show reference or mentions a show and the other person doesn't know it, they have to do ten push-ups. So I have thirty push-ups. I'll do after this cafe. Um, I'm sorry, audience, I failed you. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this upcoming Christopher Nolan movie with like six different A-list actors, pretty much. Like uh oh, the guy who played Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. Uh Ben St Oh really? Yeah. I uh, I'm, admit, big, I'm, I'm not a big I'm not a big Nolan guy. You're not a big Christopher Nolan fan? No, no. That's fair. His I, movies are I know. Um, I, he really he really Broke my heart with those Batman movies. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're, yeah, we're best friends now because you're the only other person 
who I know besides my best friend who agrees with me on that. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it, man. I'm sorry. It's just really but like Interstellar, The Prestige, all those other movies. You are know good. what? The only Christopher Nolan movie I did really enjoy was the ma- the the Christian Bale magic one. Oh, that the Prestige. That one, yes, that was a very Prestige, good movie. Yes. yes, I really, really did enjoy that movie. I I did like that one a lot. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I, I liked the. Way, it did like, hurt the Dave, the, it did hurt that David Bowie was in that movie as well, though. So. Um, Mo- yeah. Paul Mo- said Memento. Memento is a great movie. I love all of Christopher Nolan's, just the ones where um, he goes into time and he really messes with time in a lot of his movies. And those are always the ones that fascinate me. Yeah. Watch the show Dark if you like time stuff. Dark? Yeah. I'm all right, that, yeah. TV on you. Um, yeah, there's a German show on Netflix called Dark, which is the craziest time travel thing I've ever watched in my entire life. And the insane thing about that show is that the actors that they get to play the younger versions of the people look just like the people. It's crazy. Hmm, they must be doing something we don't know. Maybe there's just a lot of inbreeding in Germany. <laughs> that, that, I'm, just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> kids. That's, that was a complete joke. No, no. But I didn't, who knows? It could be like, them could have been the people's kids or, or something, you know? Oh, yeah. But they, they did a really, really great job of, of, of matching. You know, you can almost, the show almost wouldn't work had the people not looked so much like other people. Uh, the grown-up versions. Yeah. Oh, I always like watching um other language movies because I like the closed captions. It really keeps me focused on the plot. Well, yeah, and and it's Netflix, so you can watch you can watch it closed captioned or you can watch it dubbed. It's oh, it's perfect. Up to you. Yeah, it's completely up to you. Um, we <laughs> watched it closed captioned, but there were some days when we would watch it while eating dinner or something. I was like, oh, we should have been watching this dubbed. Were the voices super different? No, no, I'm just saying, I, do, I, you know, if I'm eating, it's it's harder to keep track of what I'm reading, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, well, we're coming up on the hour. If anyone in the audience has some uh, more questions, raise their hand or type them in general chat. If not, I don't want to take too much of your time tonight, Aaron. I appreciate you being here. Um, I know you said there's nothing that you're really working on that you can talk about. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not pushing anything right now, but definitely follow me on Instagram. I post almost every day. Um, and if when when and um, I can talk about this other stuff that I'm working on, um, I'll I'll definitely I'll be the place I'm posting on. Uh, Sweet, yeah, definitely. I posted his uh, socials in the general chat, so definitely go check Aaron out. Show him some love. Um, do you? I, we do actually have a quick question. Do you watch anime? And if so, have you seen Chainsaw Man? No, I have not seen it, but I've seen some amazing costumes that people have made from that. Oh yeah, I can imagine the costumes. Yeah. No, I do watch some. I do watch. I mean, I'm more. I would say I'm more of like a Miyazaki guy, you know. But I've I've definitely watched some other, you know, anime over the years for sure. Um, I would definitely say I was more influenced. I would say I read more manga now than I watch anime. I did just recently finally read all of Akira, um, and it was amazing. Oh yeah, so, just going straight to the source is better, anyways. Yeah, yeah, and 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 manga, you can learn so much about action to like utilize in your own work. It's really really helpful. They they. The, the Japanese are definitely the best at like really making things feel like they're like moving on the page, you know. Yeah. What What, what is your uh, favorite manga? If there is one. I really like Battle Angel Alita. I don't know if you've ever read that, but I've never read it. But the movie was quite good. Yeah, the comic, is, the manga is really great. Akira is amazing. Um, you know, I don't know. I got a ton of them. I really like a lot of. Uh, what's his name? Masumi Shiro's stuff, which is you know, Apple Seed, Ghost in a Shell. Um, he's really great too. Uh, 
I actually I don't know who draws it, but I actually have the Evangelion manga that sits next to my desk most days because there's a lot of really great action you can steal from in that book too. So yeah, I mean, drawn a lot of inspiration from manga smart. Yeah. So it, is, it is great. It is great. It's like, like I said, it's a great place to get really make yourself uh, to look at and make your own stuff look like it's really, you know, moving on a, you know, piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. When someone in the audience actually asked uh, when your commissions would open back up, if you want to remind them, I know you talked a little bit about that. Yeah, I think just follow my art dealer. He'll send out an email. Um, it'll probably be early next year because, you know, you don't want to and interfere with Christmas on that kind of a thing. But, oh yeah, um, you know, you want to get some money back in people's pockets before you do that. But I'm sure it'll be, it'll either be late February or early, sorry, late January or early February. So just follow my art dealer. You can sign up for his newsletter and he has a lot of fun things going on. Sometimes he'll just, you know, uh, throw up little deals for the art that's available on his website for me. Or sometimes I'll have like, Sometimes I do like art. My buddy has a local chicken restaurant and I'll do some art for that. And strangely enough, people do buy the chicken artwork. Hell yeah. And I do a lot of other things. I make stickers sometimes and I'll send the art from the stickers and things like that to him as well. So t-shirt designs, you know. Sweet. Well, yeah, it's definitely, what was uh, your dealer's handle again? That's uh, felixcomicart.com. Perfect. And Felix is just F E L I X. Well, maybe uh, next year, sometime when you got some stuff coming out, you can come back on for another cafe and catch us up on what you got going sure. on. Sure. That would be lovely, guys. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you, Aaron. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone, yeah, thank for showing you. up. And uh, same time next week, we'll be here.